Hey everyone, welcome to Urology 101. I'm James Farrell and Urology 101 is my video blog about common topics in urology, which are admittedly taboo or embarrassing sometimes because we talk about sex organs a lot. My content is focused on communicating useful medical knowledge to you with the goal of providing practical advice you can apply for healthier living. Now this video and all of my other videos are available at my website, which is urology101.com. I also have a YouTube channel, all the videos are there, and that's Urology 101. And I post daily on Instagram at, you guessed it, Urology 101. And I hope you find all of the content useful and insightful. Now on to today's video, which is not that sexy, taboo, or embarrassing, but extremely useful, especially if you've ever had kidney stones. So we're going to talk about those. If you've dealt with them, then hats off to you because passing them is miserably painful. It's 100 degrees every day down here in Texas. You can almost feel people making them in their kidneys. So there are about 5% of people out there who will make stones that are somewhat quote unquote genetic stone formers or stones that are dissolvable or happen for some very specific reasons um, in people's medical history. I don't really want to address that today. I want to talk to you about the 90 or 95 percent of people who form run-of-the-mill calcium-based stones. And I want to talk about those because those are ones where you can change some of your diet, you can modify some behaviors, and put a real dent in reducing the number of stones you ever make in the future, um, or the ability to ever make one at all. And again, if you have ever dealt with stones, passed them, had surgery, it is so painful. And so the less you deal with this, I'm sure you agree, the better. So the first thing I tell people is that they should drink more water. However much water you're drinking, drink more. Now, the way we tend to gauge this, and in research, most people will say two to three liters of urine output in a day is what you're going for. And nobody carries around an empty bottle of water and like pees into it and like, oh, I made 600 cc's. No, nobody does that, right? So the easy way around that is to just say, if your urine is clear, then you're well hydrated. If your urine's light yellow, you are also, but if it's dark yellow or anything like that, then just drink more water. I'm not talking about Gatorade or sodas or tea or whatever. Just put more water in your body. It will dilute everything that can become stone in your urine. It will push urine through your system more. Overall, you'll feel better, and I think that's gonna be helpful. The next thing I tell people is less reduce salt. And for this part, when I talk about salt, I mean sodium, so they mean the same thing. Now the reason that salt is important here is it has to do with the biochemistry on how your kidney deals with sodium and calcium. I'm not going to get too far into it because it's complicated and you're going to fall asleep. Suffice it to say that the more sodium that you put into your body, the more your kidney decides to put calcium into the urine, and calcium is what forms stones. So the less salt you have, the less likely you are to put more calcium in your urine, the less likely you are to make stones. And when we talk about salt, which is a good thing in your diet, by the way, everybody needs sodium in their life, all right? You can't live without it. But what we don't need is too much of it. And there are a lot of processed foods, processed meats, artificial foods, boxed canned foods that have a ton of sodium in them. So what I want you to do is spend a handful of days or weeks taking a look at the food you buy in the grocery store, the food you eat on a day-to-day -day basis, and get a rough idea for how much sodium is in your life, how much do you put in your body. And once you kind of have that idea, then see if there are ways to reduce it. You were looking for 2.3 grams of sodium in a day. So if everybody remembers from school, 1,000 milligrams is one gram. So 2,300 milligrams or 2.3 grams of sodium is kind of the limit of what you should be at in a day to reduce your ability to make stones. So look for low salt options, things that are you know 30, 40% less. Deli meat, low sodium deli meat. It's out there. It doesn't taste as good up front, and that's something I gotta warn you about. If you're doing this for two or three weeks, food's gonna taste like cardboard. You can blame me, that's fine. Your taste buds have gotten used to a certain amount of salt. After a couple weeks of this, your taste buds will reacclimate, and they will get used to then that new baseline level of sodium. So it will get back to normal, and then things that used to be salty, or excuse me, used to not be salty, will now start to be more salty. 
right? So it will get back to normal. You gotta trust me on that. But sodium's a big thing. The third thing you can do is add more citrate in your life. Citrate is just a molecule. It happens to be in citrus fruits, most commonly lemons and limes. And what it does is two things. One, acid-base balance in your body. It helps regulate that, which does have an impact on stones. Again, that's a lot more biochemistry. I'm gonna skip that, but just take it at face value. The other thing citrate does is it concentrates in your urine and it inhibits the ability of calcium and calcium to glom together and form a stone. So it is water soluble, which means that you pee it out in your urine and that's exactly where we want it. So the easy way to do this one is to buy a lemon, slice it up, take a slice of that, squeeze it in your water, drink that, consider that a vitamin for the day. You don't need to buy citrate vitamins, you don't need to find it other ways. A slice of lemon is a great way to do it. I will let you slide if you really want to do 7-Up or Sprite or Mountain Dew. Those all have citrate in them, but they're not the best ways to get it. Lemonade does too, lemon juice does. Those are great ways overall, but the easiest way, less, excuse me, least expensive, is really just to buy a lemon, slice it up, throw it in the water. There are two other things out there that I don't tend to recommend that often, but if you're looking online at diets, they're out there. One is that people who eat um, animal sources of protein are going to make more stones. And that also goes back to some biochemistry and some acid-based stuff. So if people want to become vegetarian, they will probably make fewer stones. Um, there is a lot on that diet. If you want to look for it, you can find it online. Otherwise, you're welcome to contact me. I can talk with you more about that. The last one is going on what's called a low oxalate diet. Where oxalates matter is that most calcium-based stones actually group together with something called oxalate, which is just another molecule. And it's in a lot of foods. So low oxalate diets may reduce the amount of oxalate, and then you make fewer stones. The problem with the low oxalate diet is I don't think it's that healthy, and it's really hard to follow. So I don't tend to talk about it much. It's not that healthy because oxalates are in everything. They're in lots of vegetables, lots of fruits, lots of nuts, um, and they're in lots of fun stuff too. So I just don't think it's a diet that's that easy to follow. And I think if you want to reduce stone formation, the easy things to modify are the things you should do because it's the stuff that you're gonna be able to start, you're gonna be able to form habits, do it longer, and ultimately just incorporate into part of your life, right? So what I'm looking at you for, or excuse me, what I'm looking for you to be able to do, add more water so that your urine is clear to light yellow, Less salt, take a look at what you eat on a day-to-day -day basis, figure out a ballpark amount, and then try and reduce that. And then third is add a little citrate to your life. Slice of lemon, that'll be good. Now, the one other thing I wanna to touch on here is that some people will ask me, hey, should I reduce the amount of calcium I have in my life? Because I'm on calcium supplements for osteoporosis, or my doctor said I should be on calcium, and you should not, I repeat, do not reduce your calcium in your life. A thousand milligrams to 1200 milligrams a day is completely appropriate. And there are plenty of studies out there that show that if you reduce the amount of calcium and you are on a low calcium diet, you will actually make more stones. So do not get rid of calcium in your life. One vitamin switch you can do, if you take calcium carbonate, you can switch it to calcium citrate, and that'll get you that citrate molecule. And then you'll be all good. All right, those are my main diet recommendations. Those are things you can do at home. I hope that this has been helpful. I hope it's clear. If it isn't, please contact me. You can do that through my website page um, and email me and I can talk to you from there. All right, have a great day. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. See you soon.